Now Hamish is here with some innovative tips to incorporating the tiny house movement mentality into your own home. Morning Hamish. Morning guys. I like that we say tiny house like well, this. Well I don't know you know I'm, I'm not a big massive fan of the tiny house um, but nonetheless there are many things that um, people are starting to think about is that we are building smaller homes and stuff that can perhaps apply to us when we want to just make a bit more space around the place we've already got. So uh, yeah. So where do we start with this? Because I guess, a, a, is it a massive cleanup? Well, yeah, okay. a cleanup is, is the key in the beginning. Now, I'm not talking about, we're going to use the word declutter. <clears throat> uh, this does not mean turn your house into a minimalist sort of zen-like state. Yeah, it's never going to happen. It's okay to have stuff. I'm a like stuff person. I have, quote, what people would call clutter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have picture frames, I have trinkets I've collected over time. I'm talking about getting rid of the excess stuff. So this is when you walk into your um, lounge, your family room, and there's a nice little coffee table there, and you can't find the remote control because it's buried under 15 magazines, uh, maybe some paperwork from work the night before, maybe work three weeks ago. Just stuff like that needs to go. I'm, I am guilty also, I am a human being, and I went and looked at my little side table because the poor legs on the side table were starting to splay out <laughs> under the weight of the stack of design books. They're okay, oh, not that I read them all the time, but I did not need the 10 design magazines that some dated back to 2004. Oh yeah, out of fashion now. Well, it's <laughs> out of fashion, so it's about removing that stuff to give the, say, the space a sense of space and to make you feel a little bit better it inside. It just makes me feel like you have been to my house and I know you have <laughs> not because this is the story of my life, clutter. Um, so where can we look at decluttering first? What are some hot well, tips? There, there, there are the obvious ones. The funny thing is uh, most houses actually have some storage in them, whether it's um, cabinets or whether it's tall boys if you don't have wardrobes in an old house, wardrobes, um, storage shelves and garages. It's about targeting those and starting to have a look at them. Well, let's fire up firstly. Shall we start with the wardrobe? Yes. What a special environment environment the wardrobe is. Wardrobe normally has clothes we wear, whole heap of old t-shirts we're never going to wear again in case we paint the house, which we never do, exactly. funnily enough. Yeah. So those can probably go, right? Um, because trust me, next year you'll create a new t-shirt for or painting the house. sleeping t-shirts. Shirts. Now, I have a particular set of shirts that I got dry cleaned and they're all even hanging up there beautifully because uh, one day plastic? I'm going to weigh about six kilos <laughs> less than I do now. So um, true. Probably not going to happen. And the funny thing is, they're now out of date, so even if I did lose the weight, I'm probably not going to wear them. They need to go. I mean, you could give them to the op shop, but remember, be kind, because if you look at them like they're hideous, they're going to not want them either. They become rags. So start getting rid of that sort of stuff and make space. So that's you, the wardrobe. What else have we got? Okay, well, can I finish one thing on the wardrobe? Yeah. You know, the top shelf in a wardrobe? Yeah. yeah. That's not for storing old photo frames, the PlayStation from 1998 and all that stuff. That can all go. Make, clear that out and you've got some space for general storage. Mm. The kitchen. How about we don't have um, three Nutribullets like I <laughs> I have at home. But you might Why do I have them. three? No, you no, you don't. I've got three. I, I got them down make. and I looked at them and I literally went, "Why do we have three, honey? And a blender and a yeah. food processor and the rice cooker and, and a steamer." And, and yeah. it's because we couldn't find them, so we had to buy a new one to add to them <laughs> because they're at the back of the cupboard. Go through your kitchen. It doesn't take long. Work on that linen cupboard. Mm -hmm. Wow, I've opened people's linen cupboards and I've seen sheets that have embroidery around the uh, the trim of it where you fold it back. No one's going to use those. <laughs> They can go, it's okay, time to move on. You don't need to store old sleeping bags from 1974. Sounds like I'm talking about my own house here. Yeah. They were very cute patterns. So I, I think you're talking about a lot of people's houses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cup, the whole cupboard full right. of presents. Yeah, you, I don't think we need to cover any more cupboards off. Well, <laughs> picture. okay. What are you talking about? Let's talk about... <laughs> Clean some, up, please, some, people. It's a multifunctional <laughs> furniture that we see in tiny homes. Right, okay. Yeah. So f thinking about furniture as in, in the space you've got. Uh, if someone's given you a large dining room table and it doesn't really fit in the room, don't keep it. You don't need it. Get a smaller dining room table. You can actually get a smaller round dining room table that might have two, three or four chairs around it, depending on what your needs are. Or you can get, of course, a table that extends out. That can be over by the wall. Easy. More people coming over. Shift it into the middle of the room. Reset it and use it that way. Uh, Ottomans work really well as seats, coffee tables, side tables. A simple thing. You can move it into the room if you need it for people to sit on, or you can just have a tray on it on top. There's plenty of things. Think about those little nooks, those little spaces. We've talked about it before. Yeah. That space that's dead, that's where you can put down a fold-down shelf and create a small office area, because it'd be really nice to see your dining room table, not have it under paperwork, computer. The bench True. is for cooking. Mark will agree with this yes. if he was here talking to me right now. You know, it's for cooking and stuff. Oh, and so don't have it stacked. Well, yes, and mine also has piles of junk. 
but those are easier ways. Think about your furniture and what you can do with it. Oh, you know, because I've got an ottoman that can actually put all those 2004 magazines in so no one can see them. Oh, it has a lift-up lid. Yeah, so that's Great. furniture. What about adopting sort of a, a layout similar to tiny homes? OK, well, layouts in tiny homes are relatively simple. They maximise the use of the space and they tend to keep things further back to the walls. If you've got a large space, we've talked about you want to keep things in a bit, but if you've got a smaller space, you want them to be back not hard against the wall. You want to have that false sense of depth to the room still. But as I said, dining room table, prime example. Yeah. It can be a fluid environment. So we, as a couple, dine here. Mm -hmm. If we have more people over, we pick it up and move it out and dine in the middle of the room. Right. So you can think about how you use the space, and it's OK to pick things up and shift. You don't put things there and go, that'll do for 10 years. <laughs> That horrifies so me. True. Feel free to move stuff around. Right. Think about it when you're shopping for couches and bits and pieces. Also, you don't need to keep the old couch because it's big and clunky. Get a smaller one that's lighter. It doesn't impose on the room too okay, much. Okay, I have to stop you because we've run out of time. But you, really? You're on a, and you're on a roll. You, you are keep on going. A roll. Thank you so much. Jesse's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.